you said something maybe 20, 30 minutes ago, and I, I jotted a note down because I didn't want to um, derail us at the time, but I'll, I'll come back to it now. So um, when I'm doing my VO2 max sets, the thing I monitor for every set is heart rate recovery. Yep. So as soon as I get to the top, because I do those on a hill. So as soon as I get to the top of the hill, I hit a timer, I hit the lap timer, and I count how many beats does my heart rate go down in the first 60 seconds at the completion of the interval. And that's a great proxy for it how is. I'm doing. Um, so I've got kind of my normal range should be 30 to 35. On a really good day, I'm 40 to 45. And a week ago or so, I had like one of the worst days I've ever had where I was like 19 to 21 in a minute. That's all I could recover. I mean, I was smoked. Uh, now, I didn't sleep the night before. So I think, you know, I made an Instagram post about it because I thought it was just a great sort of illustrative teaching point. You said something that made me wonder about another test. Would there be any utility in right after a VO2 max interval doing an R heart rate variability test oh, heart rate to variability. see how much sympathetic tone can I dial down and how much, how much parasympathetic tone can I dial up after what's probably a peak you know, a very high sympathetic, low parasympathetic sure, exercise. Yeah, you, you, can, you can do that, actually. I mean, it's very specific. Like, you can't move around if you want to get some standardization to it. So, yeah, you could you could do a 10, 15-minute recovery period. Steven Seiler, the guy What if I just did it right at the top? Like, literally, would that be too much? Prob probably. I think, honestly, I think heart rate recovery is illustrative. It's far better it's, for that. Well, it's illustrative of what you wanted to get to because okay. – what we see is heart rate recovery is driven by what? The reactivation. The, the balance of those the, it's, two. It's turning the sympathetic down as quickly as possible and turning the vagus, the parasympathetic up as fast as possible. So heart rate recovery is already giving you that information without having to get as granular as pulling out the, the B2B. Like you don't Got necessarily it. have to get that level of detail. You can just see the heart rate drop. And that drop is being caused by the increase in heart rate variability. And what's really fascinating is they used to think, and this is pretty new research I was I'm going through, we used to have this idea that when your heart rate increased above 100 beats per minute, that there was really no vagus input. There was almost no parasympathetic. And, and they figured that because they would look at acetylcholine as essentially they could block it into the heart. And they'd say, oh, we block acetylcholine from vagus and the heart still pumps just fine during the exercise. The exercise must not be vagusly driven at all. But what they found is that the vagus might actually be turned up a bit during exercise in some sense because it can increase coronary blood flow by increasing vasodilation mm. in the coronary artery. And so HRV is probably not, or heart, the vagus, I should say, is probably not completely inactive. Completely off, yeah. You no, know, it's probably not completely off. It's this, it's this ratio. It, it could be turned up, but the sympathetic system is turned up so much more, and it's using a different mechanism. We don't see the heart rate variability high, obviously, but it's probably more ready to turn that back up even further as soon as that sympathetic system starts turning down. And we're dropping our, you know, our adrenergic hormone levels, our catecholamines, all these things are dropping pretty quickly. And the faster we can turn that parasympathetic up, the faster our heart rate comes down. The other thing that's interesting is they've looked at heart recovery in terms of it represents to some extent the balance of the aerobic and anaerobic systems that contributed to that exercise. So the more aerobically driven something was, the faster our heart rate drops. Because in a lot of ways, higher heart rates are driven by that sympathetic and by the anaerobic pieces mm. of metabolism. What so do you see in young, exceptional athletes? I mean, I, I wish I had tracked this metric when I was a teenager. Yep. Like, I wish I know how much my heart rate recovered then. Um, back when my peak heart rate was 205 to 210. Uh, what what do you see I mean, in these really young numbers, collegiate 50, athletes? 60 from you know, near max. So. Yeah, I trained combat athletes, UFC fighters, yeah, yeah. fighters for many, many years, and they have to go into the octagon or cage ring, depending on what they're doing, and they have to fight for three five-minute rounds, the five five-minute rounds, probably just a 10-minute round, which is crazy. Um, and so we would use heart rate recovery between rounds as a really good gauge. Because it's one minute between rounds, same as boxing. Between rounds. Okay. Yes, exactly. And they would sit down between rounds so we could standardize that. And so I would use that drop as a very good gauge of how well conditioned is this athlete, how ready to go so out there. Give me an example of what you they, would they see on a able, fighter. They, they would come out of the, they would come the out, previous we'd, we'd, round at what? I'd want to, they'd come out 160, 180, depending, I mean, it could be. Depends what the round was what the about. Depends the round was sure, like. Yeah. And the round was slower, it's going to be much lower. But most of the rounds were between like 160, 180, depending on their, their age or anything else. You and might they could drop up. by 50 to 60. They would, I would want them to get to 130s 
between each round. We would simulate this in sparring rounds, getting leading up to the fight. We wouldn't measure it during a fight, obviously. Yep. But if they're doing a simulated fight round where it's three fives or five fives, I'd want them to be able to drop in the 130s between every round. If we started seeing their first round, they weren't coming down below 150, 160. They're not in good enough they're shape. They're not good enough shape. They, yep. were, they were gonna fatigue every time. And that just told us they were having to rely so much on the anaerobic piece, they were gonna fatigue. Because at, at a sport like this, and where you have to be really explosive, but you have to also have the endurance. It's about the ratio of yeah. energy utilization that matters so much. If you don't have enough anaerobic, you're gonna lack power and speed and you know ability to finish. But if you have not enough aerobic, you're not gonna sustain that explosive power for very long. And so it's really tricky to get that ratio right. And you see the fastest, most explosive, uh, hardest hitting athletes often fatigue the fastest because they're generating that from the anaerobic side yeah. and they're relying on that. And that's great if they can win and they can knock the person out or submit them. But if they can't and you get in the later rounds, that's where they're going to really struggle versus somebody else who's more aerobically dominant. So that's a really hard part about that sport is getting that ratio correct and training the right side of it. Um, but the heart rate recovery was such a great way to see that. And so like I said, I would want to see in sparring at least, you know there are going to be higher heart rates during the competition from the psychological mm -hmm. stress. But we want to see them drop in the 130s. Again, this is seated, going from standing to seated. But they should be able to get their heart rate back in the 130s between each round, ideally, before they go for a fight. If they could do that and they were fighting at a high level pace, you knew they were in pretty good condition and they'd be ready to go out and go. If they weren't doing that, especially if the early rounds, if they're, like I said, round one, they're at 150, 160, you know they better finish the fight quickly or they're going to be in trouble. <laughs>